Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing Positive, written by David Wellington. It's a dystopian horror novel about zombies, but all the action takes place many years after the outbreak. And it's also a bit of a sci-fi novel as well. But the horror element is more about what humans do to each other, not what zombies do to humans. Zombies are there, but in the background. It's all about humans doing horrible things to each other and the reasons why. And I found that quite interesting because it makes you wonder about humans in the real world as well, in our world, and how they're horrible, horrible to each other. And you just wonder if a disaster happens in the world, what would happen? Would humanity really turn on each other? Would we see the worst of humanity if that were ever to happen? In this novel, it's years after the zombie outbreak, and we have a second generation of survivors. And that second generation is in their late teens, around 20 years old. So you can see it's quite a few years after the zombie outbreak, and humanity has managed to survive. Our main character, Finn, he lives in New York with his family, and there's quite a community there, so many families living in this small enclave. There's a mayor who seems a bit corrupt, but they're getting by, it's very hard, they are getting by. So everybody struggles to live, survive, but they're doing the best they can. Suddenly, Finn's mother changes. So she dies, almost like an aneurysm, and then she changes to a zombie. And Finn's friend, who's with him at the time, ends up killing the mother, killing the zombie. But what we learn at this stage in the story is that the virus can take up to 20 years, 21 years, to present itself in somebody. So you're being infected and they have to wait 20, 21 years until they're sure that you're not going to turn into a zombie. And because Finn was breastfed when he was a baby, and he's not 20 or 21 yet, he has the potential to become a zombie as well. So he's banished from this town, from this community, and he's banished into no man's land. He thinks he's going to be met by somebody to take him to a hospital or some sort of building or some sort of structure in another town, but that person has been killed, so he's on his own. So he's in what they call the wastelands on his own. So Finn's life takes a change, very dramatic change for the worse. He was comfortable in his previous life with his family, now he's on his own in this wilderness. There's gangs of looters. There's road pirates that go around and just kill people and steal things. There's all these bad people in this vast area. And there's no laws. You know, there's no laws in this area. There's small enclaves, like trading centers, where looters and road pirates can take their spoils to trade for other items but there's no laws in this area. So he's got to fight for himself, fend for himself. And it's a struggle, a big struggle for him because there are a lot of people out there that are very dangerous and will kill people instantly without even thinking. So he's got to navigate in this world and he's got to change the way he thinks about things. And I think that's where this story fails a little bit because he doesn't change very much. There's not much growth with him in that respect. He still seems to stay a bit naive, a bit gentle for this world he finds himself in. And I found that that was maybe a little bit of a flaw in this story because you think a character like that, who was a bit too gentle, a bit too nice, a bit too naive, wouldn't survive at all in this world he finds himself in. I wasn't a big fan of the writing style in this story. It seemed too plain, also seemed too detailed in many areas. It tended to slow down the plot a lot, slow down action. And it felt like a lot of telling in the story and not much showing. We are told a lot of things and a lot of things we didn't need to be told about. And I found that was a, another flaw in this book. I don't know if that's consistent with how the author writes all these stories, but it was very prominent in this book. When I was reading it, I just felt like I was reading a laundry list of what was going on. And I was very, very detailed and... You didn't have to use your imagination very much. And 
I just found that slowed down the plot a lot. It's very plotting in its style, and I wanted a bit more action. Even though I'm aware this book wasn't concentrating on zombies so much, it was more concentrating on what humans were doing to each other, it could have been written in a way that had more tension and more action, more urgency in its scenes. But with that plotting style, with too much detail, with the writing being very plain, we didn't have urgency. Nothing seemed very quick. We didn't have tension and suspense. It just seemed to be the same pace all the way through. The author did put a lot of effort into world building, and I appreciated that because the world did seem complete and it did seem very well thought out and well planned. I really enjoyed the introduction of this death cult that was going on in the story. I found that fascinating in this book, and they seemed to pop up at different times through the story, and they had a big impact at different parts in the story as well. And I just love that whole concept, because it just seemed like another big enemy in the story, and it seemed like this big threat, and this threat that was maybe very small at the start, but it was growing and growing as the story went on. And I found that interesting, and that was gripping and engaging. So one element was gripping, but the writing style even let that down a little bit. So the whole concept of this death cult was gripping and engaging, but the way it was executed in the story wasn't so much, because it just had the same kind of writing style, the same plotting thing going on in the story, and it didn't really make me feel tense. It didn't get me on the edge of my seat. But if it had have done that, that whole death cult would have been brilliant. I think it's a good element. The whole concept of it is great. The world that's been created is great. It's very detailed and it feels very real for this story. But that writing style just lets it down too much. Finn, our main character. Look, he's an okay character, but he's not wonderful. I think there are times where the story just turns too easily for him, so it doesn't feel organic, it feels forced, especially with the things he goes through. And he's put through many, many extreme things in this book, and I don't get how he survives them all. That didn't seem real. So while the world seemed real, this character didn't seem as real as the world that he's in. So I found that a bit strange, and it made me disengage from Finn a little bit. He seemed too gentle for the world he's in. Even though there's some character growth, and he does toughen up a little bit through the book, he just seems still a bit naive and too gentle, and I found that a bit strange in the story as well. And I wondered how he could survive in this world, and it made me think about it being too forced and not organic enough. Kylie, who's a very strong female character in this book, she does come across as a bit one-dimensional though. So there's this thing with her in this book where she's been through trauma in her life. And whenever there's stress that's going on or somebody is confronting her, there's a confronting situation she finds herself in, she zones out and that's her coping mechanism. So you can understand that happening to somebody in real life through PTSD or something. So that makes sense. But the way it's used in the book doesn't make sense because when she's needed, when she really needs to respond to something or take action, she can zone back in instantly and she can respond or she can do something to help in the scene. So that doesn't make sense with the character. If she's zoning out because of external stresses and pressures, why is she able to zone in straight away when those same pressures exist? So it doesn't make sense with the character and it made me feel like this character was not created very well, that it was more one-dimensional. And that just stuck with me through this whole book. Red Kate is meant to be another strong female character in this book, and an evil character. Somebody is out to hurt Finn. But it was very hammy, so that made me feel like it wasn't as real as it should be in the story. It just seemed a bit too overdone in the story, the way the character was portrayed through dialogue and through action. It just made the character not seem as threatening as she should be. And that's a bit of a shame because Red Kate could have been a great villain in this story, but unfortunately, just the way she's written, that writing style, the way she's portrayed, makes her feel a bit hammy, makes her feel not as threatening as she should be, and I found that a bit disappointing because I needed a strong villain in this story, and there's just not a strong villain. Even though we've got humanity being 
evil to each other, doing awful things to each other, there's not a villain that's strong enough to make you cringe, you know, give you chills. And that story needed this. The story needed somebody who's going to give you those chills. While I thought the world building was very well done, a lot of the characters let it down a lot. And just the writing style, the, the extra detail, the plotting writing style, the way it doesn't change in tension in the story lets the world down as well. I rate this a 3 out of 5. I just wish the author had created more tension in the story and given us more urgency in certain scenes and not made some characters feel hammy and some characters feel a little bit underdone, a little bit one-dimensional. That would have made this story so much more better because the whole world is great. The whole concept of having the horror about being what humans are doing to each other more than zombies, I found that fascinating and I thought just the writing style let that down as well. On my channel, I do review a lot of horror novels. If you're interested in horror novels and you don't want to miss out, check out my channel and subscribe. Also, there's a horror playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.